What's good, you too? It's your boy Trey here back again with another video. And today we're going to be grading the free agency signings of East 10. Now, we're going to start off with Jeremy Grimm. Five years, $160 million. Ooh. I say C+. Plus. Now, the reason why I get this a C+, plus, yes, he has 20 points. Yes, he has 40% from the field. But is Jeremy Grant, like, think about this for a second. Jeremy Grant, five years, $160 million. That is wild to me. And good for Jeremy Grant for getting the bag. That's all that matters at the end of the day. But the Blazers, with the incoming, you know, Dame trade, yeah, I don't, like, see too much upside with this. Yeah, it's not even a tradable deal. So, if they, if they sign, since they signed to this, they're going to have to keep a hold of them for multiple years, at least two or three. Okay, so we go to Fred Van Vliet. Three years, $128 million. Now, 40 some million for Fred Van Vliet, that's insane. Because players like AD, uh, Chris Milton, I think Zach Levine, I believe. I got to look at the contracts. Uh, um, definitely like guys like LeBron and stuff like that. Fred Van Vliet is not on that tier of player at all. Like I don't understand how is he touching forty million when when you didn't even have to really bet against nobody besides the Raptors. You didn't have to overpay for Fred Van Vliet now. Mind you, this is I think this is a player option, a team option. I'm not sure. I think it's a player option. Because Rich Paul, he definitely negotiated a lot of guys this free agency period. And they ended up getting player options. Even Cam Reyes got player options. So I think he got player options. So this is basically a, a definite two-year deal. But that's insane. Especially since you just drafted the Thompson twin. Man, Thompson, you just drafted him. And it's going to be very hard for him to see men over Fred Van Vliet. Because you know the politics gonna be involved, and he just got paid forty million, so you have to play him. So, uh, good luck with that. That's all I gotta say. Kyrie Irving, three years, one hundred twenty-six million, bro. Freaking Kyrie Irving got less than Fred VanVleet. Like, I understand like the bad press around Kyrie Irving and stuff like that, and it was basically only one team that could offer him money. And I'm not forgetting to what Bill Simmons said about the other teams offering Kyrie. But, yeah, it was basically no market for Kyrie. So, it was just Kyrie versus the Mavs and the Mavs won. So, that's the Kim John. Oh, yeah, also, let me see. I give the Fred Van Vliet move a, a C-. minus. I give the Kyrie move uh, a B-. minus. Okay, so, Cam Johnson, four years, $108 million. See, Kim Johnson, he's a nice player, but he, he's injury prone, man. I, I don't know. I truly don't know how I feel about Kim Johnson and his contract. Four years, $108 million. This may be, I think this is probably a slight overpay, so I'm just going to give this a C plus because he's a solid player. Don't get me wrong. Like I believe if he stayed healthy and he's a bit younger, this is definitely a, a good contract for the Nets and Cam Johnson. Okay, so C plus for the Nets for Cam Johnson. Let's go to the Washington Wizards for Kyle Kuzma. Four years, $102 million. Now, this is crazy because Kyle Kuzma is a better player than Cam Johnson as of this moment. And he got less than Cam Johnson, which is crazy to me. Uh, Kyle Kuzma... Definitely sold his worth this year. I thought he would get more than this. Washington Wizards, they going to be a rebuilding team with Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. So, this going to be interesting. So, I give this move a B plus. I give this move B plus. Chris Milton. Another person that got less than uh, Cam Johnson. And definitely got less than Fred Van Vliet. Three years, $102 million. Now... That deal, I want to say it's a steal because he's, like, his knee injuries and, like, his health as a way has been very shaky. So, I, I don't, like, this is a good deal for the Bucks. So, I'm giving this a, a solid B-plus as well. 
because the books they like um they signed they resigned Chris Books and that, uh, they, that was the top priority, right? They give for a cheap deal. So yeah, this is a B plus for the books on this signing and I'm not gonna think twice about it. Draymond Green, four years and hundred million. C. I give this move a solid C. Now the reason why I give this move a solid C is first off, Draymond Green is like what? In his early thirties, like 32, 33, or something like that. His points per game has like just took a steep decline. His three point percentage took a steep decline. His playmaking, yes, he's a good playmaker for Warriors. Like he fits this system. He's like nobody else gonna pay him that, but like the Warriors because of how value his value he uh, he provides for that team. And yeah, I just feel like twenty five mil for like a great one of the best health defenders in the league, probably the best health defender in the league, probably top five defender in the league overall. But. 25 mil for that though? I, uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I gotta think about it some more, but that's right now. I say a C. Yaku Pearl, four years, 8 million. D plus. Now, the reason why I give this a D plus, the Raptors. For, for the Raptor side thing, because I believe this is solid, like, market value for Yaka Purdy, but at the same time, I think nobody was giving him $20 million. So, that's that's point number one right there. Point number two is, are the Raptors going to pick a side? Like, like they just giving mixed signals to the rest of the league. Like, they was going to, like, move all their, all their uh, tradable assets away to just do nothing. They lose out on Fred Van Vliet. And I'm going to get into the other move they did. But they miss out on resign Fred Van Vliet. They overpay for Yaka Pearl, who's a nice, very nice rim protector. Don't get me wrong. But if they, he, and there's a report that came in that he don't want to be in a losing situation. So, if the Raptors do move OG Anobi or Siakam or both, now you have to trade Yaka Purdy as well because he he clearly stated he didn't want to be in a rebuilding situation. Now the money could have changed things. We don't know that, but yeah, the, the Raptors need to pick a side and stay on this side because if this oh yeah, we want to rebuild. No, we want to contend for the playoffs. Needs to stop. So I'll give this move a D plus for the Raptors. The Houston Rockets, they paid Dylan Brooks four years, eight million. I think I'm also, well, I see what the Rockets trying to do at least. Like they actually got a direction they want to go. I say C plus. The reason why I give this move a C plus. First off, twenty million for Dylan Brooks. I don't even think like other teams are offering that. Let's say if Brook Lopez would went to the Rockets first, then Dylan Brooks would have been like searching for a situation. The Bucks would try to give him some money. I don't think the Bucks is giving him twenty million dollars to like be a great per- perimeter defender, but a bad, very bad offensive player who takes way too many shots, in my opinion. Like, I see the direction the Rockets are going. I see what they're trying to do: get some more variance in the locker room, try to get, um. Uh, Trying to change the culture on the defensive end. They got Ime Udoka, who's, who cares a lot about defense. So, yeah, I give this move a C plus because I actually see the direction the Rockets is going in. So, the Cavaliers, they paid Max Street four years, $63 million. I give this move a C minus. Now, the reason why I give this move a C minus is... Max Struess, he's a, like I said, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. But we don't know how he's going to be for the rest of this country team. Because we see what Duncan Robinson just did. He got paid and did not look the same since, but he made a resurgence in the playoffs this year. So, I don't know. We got to do a way and see for, like, I wouldn't even call him a 3 and D player. I think he like 3 no D because 
His defense, like, he at least tries, though. I give him that. He at least tries. But four years, 63 million, I'm not sure. So, I, so I, what I say? I, a D plus? No, I said C minus. I'm, yeah, I'm going to give this move a C minus. Now, for one of the steals in free agency, Herb Jones, four years, 56 million. This is definitely an A minus for me because, first off, Herb Jones, one of the best. Perimeter defenders in the league, you re- you resign him at a cheaper cost when nobody would. I bet you if he was like an unrestricted free agent, a uh, free agent, folks would have been lined up to pay Herb Jones around like eighteen to twenty million. So yeah, matter of fact, I'd probably say twenty to twenty two million because I'm trying to see if you do this well. Four years, 60, 56 million. Let me see. Uh, I'm not finna do all that right now, but it's, I think it's closer to 20 million. I'm gonna look it up. I'm probably gonna put it in the video. So, yeah, if he was an unrestricted free agent, free agent, he definitely got a bunch of shooters lined up to try to pay him. Because, for example, look at Dylan Brooks. He got four years, 80 million. As a matter of fact, as I'm looking, as I'm looking at, is this. Wow, four years, eight million for Dylan Brooks, four years, 56. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, this is definitely still A minus for the Pelicans right here. Austin Reeves, four years, 56 million. I give this move an A because the way folks was talking, folks thought he was going to get at least like four years, almost uh, 100 million. So that's 25 million per. This is crazy. They got this deal right away. They made sure they locked him up right away because, for example, like his market was drawing up. The Rockets, they already signed. They players they wanted to sign. And the Spurs. The, the Spurs was the only team that could offer him a bag. But the Lakers didn't even want to take that risk. They just hurry up, signed him to this amount of money. And kept it pushing. So this basically ran the same deal Herb Jones guys. And I believe both are steals. So yeah, the, I give the Lakers a A. Rui Hachimura, three years fifty one million. Seven oof man. So yeah, folks said this is an overpay. I don't see this as overpay. I believe this is market value. And I give this move a B. Plus, now it could have been higher, but a three year deal, I wish it was like more four year deal so you can have more security. But I guess the the Lakers won't have more flexibility, especially with AD future contract extension coming up. They want to be more flexible, you know, as the years go on. They don't want to be too cap struck, you know, in certain years. So I, that's that. Dante DiVincenzo signed with the New York Knicks, four years, fifty million. Uh, see, they the Knicks already have a bunch of guards, though. I give it a B because they already have a bunch of guards. Dante DiVincenzo is just gonna add to that. He's on the smaller size of guards. He's not the like the tallest in the world, but he's. He's tall enough and plays defense, and he tries his well, and he's a good shooter. But, man, four years, 50 minutes. Yeah, I give it a B, but they already have a bunch of guards. I don't know how this is going to work. Brooke Lopez, two years, 48 million. Oh, 24 million a year for Brooke Lopez. And it's a two-year deal. I give this an eight months. Since this is a two-year deal, 48 million, so that's 24 for both years. And it could be a one year deal depending on how this you know contract is. Yeah, I give this deal a money because he just made first team all defense, so that's solidified right there. He's gonna get the bag, get that out the way. So yeah, that was solidified. He's gonna get the bag, and uh, he been DP DPO walk conversations for a little bit now. So yeah, this is a solid move for the Bucks. Now the Indiana Pacers, two years, forty-five million, bro, for Bruce Brown. Twenty-two and a half million for Bruce Brown. 
I give this move a C because I don't think folks is lining up to pay Bruce Brown twenty two and a half million dollars. I I truly don't believe that. I understand folks you can't judge it based on what other teams I I can understand that, but the Pacers were betting against themselves. I don't like and then their guard rotation they just trade uh Chris Duarte to the King. So they free up some guard depth, but they guard depth definitely gonna be still like a long jam, but you can play Bruce Brown like anywhere on the team except for center, of course. And he'll be effective. But we gonna see. It's also a two year deal, so that's why I didn't give it like lower than C. <laughs> D'Angelo Russell, two years thirty seven million. So this like like seventeen like eighteen like yeah, eighteen and a half million dollars for D'Angelo Russell. See, he was asking for like twenty to like almost like thirty mil at one point. And they got him at eighteen. So this is basically a solid contract. So I'm gonna give this move a B push. No, the reason why I didn't give you like a A, I mean we got well actually, let me think about it. I give you A money as a matter of fact, because like I said, he was he won thirty mil. No other team was gonna do that. So Lakers didn't like overpay just to overpay like certain teams did. They they waited it out and they 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 struck a good deal for they uh started point guard. So that's that. Kobe White, three years, thirty three million. So that's eleven million per. Um uh, I give this move a B plus. Now the reason why I give this move a D plus, I mean not D plus, a B plus is because Kobe White, he's a solid player. It's not with his skills or anything, but man, I I truly don't know the direction of where the Bulls is going though. Like, are they gonna keep their same roster and um trade uh Zach or V or Demar, or are they just gonna keep both of them and try to see where they're gonna go? Because they already resigned the Kova Vucevic, so it's no telling what the Chicago Bulls are is wanting to do with their roster, but if they can stay in pack, like I I see no reason for them to stay in pack. Okay, if you get rid, rid of one of Demar or Zach, then Kobe White contract gonna look even better because he's gonna have more touches with the Rock and his points per game gonna go up. So I don't understand that. And we go to another eleven million dollar per. Three years, thirty-three million for Gabe Vincent. That's what the Lakers gave him. Now, I when this move was ha- happened, I truly questioned. It. I truly did because paying eleven million dollars for a backup who like I know he did well in the playoffs, but I don't know. I I don't know. He definitely a solid pickup. Don't get me wrong, like. I, my friend, let's get the gray out the way. Get the gray out the way. I give this a B minus, just because of the, like the amount of money they use. Now I'm glad they didn't use all of their MLE, so they still have money to like you know put in a trade exception. Once they have a, like what five to like eight mil in a trade exception, that's pretty solid. And then they have Malik Beasley, they can just, uh, find a trade partner with. Well, he's not on the roster, but they can, you know, sign and trade him elsewhere. So, I mean, that's a solid move for the Lakers. I, like I said, I give you a B minus. I just want to pay. I just want to pay Gabe Vincent eleven million dollars, probably like three more mil sh- shorter than that, in my opinion. And they could split that up and got Jay McDaniel's or something because then Jay McDaniel. I'm gonna get into Jay McDaniel's. So we are gonna get into it. Karis LeVert, two years, 30, 32 million. See, I would have gave this a lower grade, but since this is a two year deal, I'm giving this a B plus. Karis LeVert, he's solid in the in the role he's given. Very inconsistent at times. But once he starts, when the uh folks are injured, he definitely shows up. And I believe this is and he's like and he actually got better as a defender as the years went on. Good playmaker as well. So, yeah, I can understand the move. 
you know, yeah, this is a solid return for Karis LeVert. So, Jock Glendale. Four years, 32 million for Jock Glendale. He was a vet minimum guy. Folks thought he was a vet minimum guy again. Eight mil for Jock. I mean, he's a solid player. Don't get me wrong. He's definitely a solid player. He tries his butt off on defense. But his three-point shot definitely, like, took a steep decline. So, eight mil for him, though? I, I give this move a C plus. Yeah, because I don't think, like, other team offered with this willing to. And then they gave him a four-year deal. On top of it, so yeah, I I don't know about this deal. Uh, I guess they just want to get off money because they had, it, so they might as well spend on somebody. But four years for I want the game in four years, in my opinion, like two years sixty, I can definitely see it, or like three years twenty four, I can definitely see it. But four years, I don't know, man. George Niang, three years, twenty six million. Uh, I give this move a B. Now, George D.A., he's a big body. He, you can throw him, folks. He's not the best perimeter defender because of his foot speed. He's a shooter that they need, though, for so for so. And now they have him and Max Struess, and a three-point shooter has definitely gotten a lot better because uh, last year, they definitely didn't have it, and it was, like, embarrassing. So, that's why they just got the mock, like, the, man, that was, <laughs> I, like, I can't even get, get the words out how embarrassing that word was. So, yeah, I believe both him and the A, or uh, Struis and the A, going to definitely help out the Cavaliers next year. This is true. Two years, $25 million. Wow. I give this move a B minus. The reason why I give this move a B minus is this sure doesn't like his his skills as a player is definitely not gonna help the Raptors as much because of his three point shoot. His playmaking is not good. He's basically like a two guard. And, uh, I basically like I would. Like, other teams was not lying enough to pay this sure this, this amount of money. But I can understand for the Raptor side of things since they needed to find a point guard right away. So, they did just that. And also, they can still trade for Damian Lewis. So, watch out for that. So, yeah, that's all for part one of me grading the free agency moves. Let me know if you want part two. Like, comment.